Good morning. You're welcome to my secret place. This is the beginning of a new working week and the beginning of new encounters with God. Our theme for the week is Men Who Saw God. But our topic for today is Born After Midnight. And our text is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and also Isaiah 44, verse 3. I'll read Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. I think I'll also read Isaiah 44, verse 3. The Bible says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and streams upon the dry grounds. I will pour out my spirit upon your offspring, and my blessings on your descendants. Now, contrary to public opinion or popular opinion, it is not the hour of the day that determines your divine visitation. It is actually the state of your heart that determines your divine visitation. It is not because you've prayed by 12 midnight or by 1 a.m. or by 1 p.m. or whatever time that you've prayed or you've asked God for something that would determine how much God will respond to you. It is actually your desire, your desperate need for God, your hunger for God that pulls God in your direction. When you are hungry for God, according to what the Bible says, and you are thirsty for God, that's serves as a magnet pulling the visitation and the divine hand of God in your direction. There's one man that I know that actually desperately needed God. His name was Moses. Now in Exodus chapter 24, something interesting happened. God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, come up to Mount Sinai. I want to talk to you. Moses quickly went up to Mount Sinai to have an encounter with God. However, for six days, God said nothing to Moses. Moses stayed there. Why? He was hungry for God. He didn't get up and leave the presence of God. He stayed there on the first day, second day, that day, God said nothing. Nothing happened, but Moses knew, I cannot leave this place. I need God. I'm desperate for a word from God. I'm desperate for a touch from God. I'm desperate for divine direction from God. I'm desperate for healing from God. And David stayed there. God came quiet on the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Eventually, on the seventh day, that was when God opened his mouth and said something to Moses. Moses knew how desperately he needed, he wanted, he needed God. And therefore, he said, I will not leave this place until he speaks to me, until he touches me. How desperate are you from, for God? A lot of times we think we need something from God and then we go, maybe we go to pray or we're waiting on the Lord and after a, a few days you, it looks like nothing is happening and then you just walk out of God and, and take your own decision or do something else. Moses stayed. He looked very stupid to the whole world. How can you disdain you're believing God for something and nothing is happening and you're still believing God for that thing? Moses said, well, you don't understand. I do not have an option. I so need God. Now, after that encounter, that encounter eventually lasted for 80 days. After that encounter, Moses has stayed so much in the presence of God that the glory of God rested so much on Moses that the Bible said that men could no longer look on his face. Men who used to stand before him could no longer behold the face of Moses. No man could stand before that man called Moses. Why? Moses desperately needed God, and he did whatever it took to get the presence of God on his life. How desperate are you for God? It is that desperation in your heart that drives you to your knees in those moments when every other person is asleep. That desperation will keep you on your knees waiting for God. The Bible says while men slept, that is when the enemy planted tars in their lives, in their ministry, in their careers, and all of that. So when those moments when men are asleep, those moments when men give up on God, that is when the enemy, the Bible tells us, goes around inciting and planting all kinds of things in their lives. So that's why the Bible says watch and pray. Now, the same scenario that happened to Moses happened again in the Acts of Apostles. When Jesus was leaving, he told the disciples, said, tarry in Jerusalem. The Bible tells us that there are 500 disciples. And Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem, wait in the upper room until the Holy Spirit comes on you and empowers you. 500 men went into the upper room. 380 were not desperate for God. They didn't need God. They didn't want God badly. They had the mental ascent of need for God. They verbalized the fact that they needed God, but in action, they actually did it. And the Bible says they left. 120 men needed God. They said, God, if you don't empower us, if you don't baptize us with your spirit, we can't do this. We cannot move ahead. We need your glory. We need your presence. We need your power. And so they stayed. And the Bible says, 
120 men had a divine visitation from God. Those 120 men changed the world forever. Why? Because they were desperate enough to wait in God's presence. They were desperate enough to hold on to God. They knew that without God, there was no other alternative. Now, the whole world was forever grateful to those 120 men that waited. If they didn't wait, they wouldn't have had an encounter. And probably the gospel wouldn't have reached Africa or reached Europe and all, all over the world by this time. But thank God they waited. Every time, people always say that they are desperate for God, but they are not, because they are not willing to stay in the presence of God. You can be as filled with the presence of God as you want to, because it is actually your desire that determines the amount of God that you draw in your direction. Men who saw God are men who waited in the presence of God. Look at what happened to Moses. The reward of waiting in God's presence was that glory resting on his life. The people who said no to him before could no longer say no. Why? The man waited in the presence of God. When you can wait in the presence of when you wait in the presence of what happens to you that the glory of God will rest on you in such an amazing way that everything that has stood before you will suddenly melt in your presence. Because nobody can look God eyeball to eyeball and say no. The challenge is we have not waited in God's presence. We have not held on to God long enough. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 44, he said, I will pour water upon who? Upon the ones that are thirsty. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, he said, when you are hungry, when you are thirsty, that is when you get my attention. I've often said that hunger for God is a divine attention getter. What is that thing that will make God pass over a thousand people to reach to that one man or that one woman at the back? It is hunger for God that draws the attention of heaven in your direction. This week, I want to encourage you to wait on God, to desperately need God, to desperately desire God. For if you do not have the presence of God on your life, you're going to struggle in life. The Bible says in, in Exodus 34, it said that the people were needed naked. Aaron had made them naked by making them commit sin and the presence of God was taking up their lives. And the Bible said that they were naked. Moses saw that they were naked. How come Moses was able to see they were naked? Because he had spent time in the presence of God and his spiritual eyes were open. These other ones that did not spend time in the presence of God, the Bible says that they were naked. When you don't have the presence of God on your life, you're actually naked and exposed to all kinds of things that will happen in your life. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. For this week, you'll be like those men who saw God. You'll be like those men who are so hungry for God that you're willing to wait in the midnight hour when every other person is asleep, you're on your knees asking God to touch you, asking God to give you a word, asking God to feel you afresh, asking God to baptize you afresh, asking God to reveal himself to you afresh, asking God to restore his presence and his grace upon your life afresh. God bless you this week. God wants us to desperately need him. And that's the kind of encounter you're going to have this week. God bless you and bless you and favor you. Let the hand of God rest mightily upon you this week in the name of Jesus. You can go to our site on www.mspdevotion.com and look for past editions for of My Sacred Place. God bless you.